Hello and welcome to Middle Class Film Class Podcast. <laughs> My name is Joseph. I'm Peter. <laughs> I'm Tyler. And welcome back to the podcast, guys. Episode 11. It is great to be <laughs> back. And uh, I have some news, uh, movie news, really quick that I want to share with our audience and you guys. So, Nicolas Cage is taking the Shia LaBeouf path and starring in his own biopic. Oh, yes. I heard about this. The first movie about Nicolas Cage starring Nicolas Cage. It's only natural that he stars in his own biopic. Is he going to He's gonna pay, play himself as a child and a teenager and an adult? <laughs> 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 so yeah apparently he's uh he's going to be playing himself like being like bankrupt and like trying uh, so i think the plot is he's going he uh applies for a role in the quentin tarantino movie and he doesn't get it i think it was pulp fiction and um <laughs> probably john travolta's role yes in vega yeah i would imagine so so and that's also the the lost superman movie Oh direct, yeah, directed by That's, Tim Burton. Yep. I don't know about that. Yeah, have, Nicolas really? Cage. Nicolas Mm-mm. Cage was supposed to be uh, Superman. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there's like footage of him in the in a in the outfit, like doing no. like, co- like wardrobe testing. No, I don't. I'm not aware of this. You should yeah. look it up. Everyone I should feel awesome. like I feel. I feel cheated that I didn't know about this <laughs> till today, today. So yeah, I thought that would uh, be uh, really interesting to share because Nicolas Cage starring in his own mm-hmm. biopic, like that's that's a masterpiece. That is a masterpiece in the making. <laughs> <laughs> I want. I, I want to see a fully grown balding Nicolas Cage shouting at his mother for more cookies as as a, as a four-year-old <laughs> i'm not even gonna try an impression because it, it would uh, destroy it in your head. and that and also when he comes to terms with the fact that his son is uh, weird that's the best way to describe him have you ever seen nicholas cage's son oh yeah no. i've seen him on uh so there's he went on a red carpet at one point with him and he like looked like so that's a big yikes yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's oof 2.0 <laughs> can't even imagine so yeah uh, look out for nicholas cage's new biopic starring nicholas cage uh, coming to a theater near you uh actually i have a question on this is this is it is it biopic or biopic because i've heard both and i think they're both great it's a biopic but biopic is just a kind of goofy way to say it uh, or or is that just wrong? Because <laughs> like, I've been saying I, biopic. I mean, because it's it's a biographical picture, uh-huh. so it would logically it would be bio uh-uh. biopic. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Well, Damn it. Um, also for our audience who listened last week, we talked um, for a little bit about uh, David Ferrier's um, feature length documentary called Tickled. And uh, I have a uh, retraction. Uh, I apologize <laughs> oh. to our audience. Um, th- it does not, you know, it does not have an exclamation point on the end of it. I'm think I'm. I think I was thinking of the documentary Nuts, which is <laughs> <laughs> which is about uh, a weird like Icelandic or Norwegian doctor who's like experimenting with like inject like injecting goat. Semen into humans for virility purposes. There's, it's really. What? I don't know. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it, and it's. He's well, also I'm interested has, now. Yeah, but Nuts. anyways. So, on and and on that note, all three of us, Joseph, Tyler, and I, all watched um, <clears throat> Tickled here at, at my house this list last week since the last time we recorded, Nuts. and it holds up. It is weird. It's outrageous, <laughs> yes. dude. It, yeah, it, it, it's. it's it's crazy. Like I didn't even know people were into that. So it, it, I think really the the way the documentary was filmed made it more impactful than it because it was like investigative journalism essentially. Yeah. Well, it, the does it... we had people coming in and out of like the the room as we were watching it. Like other people were at the house but not sitting down watching it with us. And every so often, someone would come in the room and just look at the screen and go, "What the." What the hell are you guys watching? <laughs> it's, it's a guy strapped to the bed and another man straddling him face to face as he tickles him while a guy, other guy's recording. And then another guy's watching this recording of this happening and just like, hmm. You know, what, what, I, wanted, happened. what I wanted to know 
though was like did they i don't think they ever addressed like how it's competitive tickling is what they called it but there was no yeah, that implies the that implies the existence of rules in this tickling competition. and a, and like how you win a like league how, yeah there was What's no that? explanation on how one wins a tickling competition <laughs> uh yeah i don't think there's any winners in that no <laughs> maybe maybe the other, maybe the guy buying the video for D- david uh, david DeMille, he's purposes. the purposes yeah oh uh, by the way he he's well uh, he died in 2017 i looked that up there's oh. a look up uh what happened after tickled yeah what happened since tickled and i look there's a bunch of uh, articles about the ringleader behind this weird tickling world yeah tickle instead, empire yeah. if you will yeah, the tickle pyre. <clears throat> tickle pyre. <laughs> I saw a movie what did over you see? the it, weekend in, in theaters. In theaters, I saw it yesterday, uh, oh. last night. It is Taika Waititi's Jojo Rabbit. Mm-hmm. It is a uh, movie about a kid growing up in Nazi Germany um, who is a fanatic of Hitler. Um, and oh, interesting. It's uh, it's it's a it's a feel it's a feel good movie, uh, you know. But you know, you wouldn't get that from based on that plot. I just <laughs> yeah, it, it is know, it's it a is feel good movie with Nazis. Exactly, and it's something you wouldn't expect. I think um, was did was was it very was it a was it a definitely a Taika movie? Uh yeah, definitely. I think I was I was talking to Tyler about this a little earlier. Um, I think. To watch this movie, you would have to watch uh, another Taika movie before watching this movie, just to get an idea of his comedy style. Get warmed up to it. I think you should start, if you're going to go down a Taika wormhole, and watching all his movies, you've never seen any of his stuff before, I recommend watching Ragnarok, Thor Ragnarok first, because that's just kind of a taste of his comedy style. Mm-hmm. And then watching this jojo rabbit and then hunt for the wilder people and then i love i love hunt for the wilder people it's a really underrated movie yeah it definitely is it's i like, thought he was talking about the snow white and the huntsman remake <laughs> no <laughs> no it's uh it's this it's the uh sam neil of event horizon fame mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Starring uh, opposite Julian Assange or something. Julian, Julian Assange? Oh my no. god! <laughs> no, <laughs> Julian. What's his name? I can't remember. His name. The kid, the yeah. New Zealand kid, the little chubby kid. Yeah, great movie. Uh, yeah, very good. And um, yeah, and then after that, it, you can kind of I think interchange his older his older movies. Um, but yeah, Hello versus Shark and Boy and uh, or Boyhood. Or what we do in the boy? shadows? It's Boy. Yeah, Boy. Um. But yeah, I uh, Jojo Rabbit. I I recommend it highly. See it. Um, mm. It is very funny, very uplifting, see, very see feel it in good. theaters. Yes. Or is it well, you I mean DVD you should see it in theaters, um, but I guess you don't have to. It's not really a a theater like you need to see it in a theater to you know not get like the, the full White effect. House. No, no. Um, but um, it is a very funny, very feel good. Um, and then it gets to a point where it's uh, not funny at all, <laughs> <laughs> and it, yeah, it's it's kind of powerful, semi powerful uh, movie. Um, cool. Yeah, Jojo Rabbit. Sick. Enough news. Let's get into the movie, <laughs> but not just yet. Um, <laughs> this week, the Wheel of Destiny landed on my pick, which was From Beyond. <laughs> Um, I'm really uh, kind of excited to talk about From Beyond with you guys. I know you guys haven't seen it before, and I just watched it maybe a few weeks ago because uh, someone at, at my work random- recommended it to me. He just pl- he plopped the DVD on my desk and was oh, like, this, "That's how you that's how you found out about this." Yeah, here, and kid, watch this. So you def- watched it. You watched it on a recommendation from your coworker, and then put it on the wheel shortly after that. No, I ha- I've had the movie for almost a year, and then I watched it a few oh. weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah. 
um yeah he's given me a bunch of movies that i've just kind of powered through and uh because i want to give them back anyway um yeah i'm excited to talk about this movie with you guys because i know it's uh tally you're a big reanimator fan oh yeah and uh anyone who's into practical effects i think can really appreciate this movie um <laughs> but before we get into the movie we do have to do our streaming picks for the week and pete do you have any streaming picks for us yeah, I do, I do, and I also have a guest streaming pick. We don't have a call-in uh, guest like uh, when Connie called us up, mm-hmm. um, but we were this week. We we received a, a review online um, from one of our listeners, Sharon uh, Gingrich, and she left us a very sweet review. Thank you, Sharon. Um, we appreciate you listening. And so I asked her if she had a recommendation, and sure enough, she had one locked and loaded. So Sharon's streaming pick of the week is uh, 2017's Unicorn Store, starring Brie Larson. Or sorry, uh, yeah, Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson. And, what the um, fuck? Yeah, you guys ever you guys ever heard of this? No, no, not at all. So Unicorn kind of a, Store. That's oh, a Netflix yeah, movie. Of, Netflix movie, kind of a small budget movie. It's the um, directing feature length directing debut for uh, Brie Larson, who actually went to elementary school here in Elk Grove. Grew up in outside no, of Sacramento. She no went to Sac State. Way, really? Yeah, she went to, went to Sac State, and then her when her parents split up, she spent most of her time down in L.A. with her mom and younger sister, but kind of split time between parents, and her dad stayed up here. Whoa. Um, I, I didn't mean, even I know. No, I, I, didn't, I had no idea. <clears throat> no. Yeah, and she, um, she was, when she was nominated for, I think she was nominated for an Academy Award for Captain Marvel. No. No. Um, what was it? What movie was? Oh no! Room. I'm sorry, not Captain Marvel. Room, yeah, Room. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Captain Marvel, Oscar winner. <laughs> um, but no, it, yeah, it was Room. Uh, when she was nominated, th- it would have been the first if she won. It would have been the first um, Oscar winner that came from Sacramento since Tom Hanks. Yeah. Um, of Wait, Tom Hanks was in Sacramento. Yeah, he came. He, came he went to Sac Sacramento. State as well. Yeah, dude. And Tyler, let me let me blow your mind Dude, even I'm, more. My mind is being blown this episode. Denzel, Denzel Washington's son went to Sac State. Holy shit, dude. I, I could have known these people. God. <laughs> Denzelito Washington. I could have known Brie Larson at one point. I saw Denzel Washington at a, a Sac State uh, football game one time. Was he cool? I didn't talk to him, but he looked scary. <laughs> what? My mom saw Danny Glover in a Safeway in, in Vacaville. Holy shit! Wait, <laughs> Danny Glover? Danny Glover from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> I'm too old for this shit, Riggs. And Predator that guy? Two. Yeah, I was gonna say in Predator, Predator two, two fame. Are you sure that's not Carl Weathers? Oh no, he no, is. It's, right, it's it is Predator Two. That's Predator. Yeah, Carl yeah. Weathers. Yeah, Carl Predator. Weathers is the first one. Yep. Um, so anyway, so that's that's um. That's Sharon's pick of the week. Thanks, Sharon, for listening. Please, Thanks. if you're out there and you listen every week, give us a like, give us a subscribe, review us on iTunes, Spotify, whatever. I don't know how all that stuff works, but it helps. So <laughs> it's, it, it's really good to hear from our uh, people who are listening. I almost said it's almost it's good to hear from our fans, but that sounds really weird to say. <laughs> um, so so that's uh, Sharon's uh, streaming pick of the week. That's on Netflix, um, and it is it is a fun movie. I watched it with Bree uh, when it came out, and um, Oh, so you had seen it before. I have, yeah. It's a goofy, kind of lighthearted movie. Um, not a heavy movie by any stretch of the imagination. She's a girl who may or may not have mental issues, and she mm-hmm. believes that, that Samuel L. Jackson comes to her as a very whimsical character and says, uh, I got a unicorn for you. All you got to do is build it a stable. And her friends and family are like, what the hell are you doing? You building the stable for a, a unicorn? And she's very transparent about what she's doing. Yeah. So you're never quite sure if there really is a unicorn in its magical world or she's just nuts. So um, it's fun. It's, a, it's worth, worth a watch. Interesting. Um, all right. And then so uh, my streaming pick is um, on Netflix as well, and it is 2009's District 9 by Neil Blomkamp. District 9. Yes. District 9. When this movie was coming out, I was so excited. I could I not was, wait for this movie to come I, out. I was so uh, – me too. I think you know, I was in – I was about – really really juiced it's uh it's like a gritty real life version of aliens come to earth but in this version they come to johannesburg south africa and they basically are stuck there and they become a minority mm-hmm. which is something that um south africa has a long storied history for 
you know, mistreating their minorities Mm -hmm. and being like a a city full of slums. And um, they fall right into that. And they're like, they even have their own um, um, derogatory term. They call them prawns because they look kind of like giant shrimp. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, it's starring Charlotte Copley, who stars in just about every Neil Blomkamp movie. Um, He's about the only person you really need to know about. But he is a social worker, government agent of some sort, and he goes into the slums and he's trying to like document these prawns and mm-hmm. he somehow gets infected with this sludge that slowly t- is turning him into a prawn and uh, it gets crazy and the government turns against him. Yeah. The practical, f- or sorry, the, the digital effects, the CGI are so good. Yeah. It's a little hard to follow um, speech wise because, you know, South Africa has a, really specific Afrikaans um, yeah Afrikaans Mm -hmm. so if you don't like uh, the Antwoord and you're not (laughs) used to listening to South African music (laughs) it may be a little hard to follow put the subtitles on for this one even though it technically is in English um, for when the humans are talking Um, but it's a it's a great watch this the special effects are so damn good in it such a uh, an odd an oddly made movie because it's like almost like it's a documentary in some parts Mm-hmm. Or He's talking mo- to the camera. Like yeah, it starts out. Yeah, it starts out as a mockumentary, and then it goes into full-fledged sci-fi drama. Yeah, and then yeah. and then like the 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 concept of the movie, where the whole part where he's turning into a prawn is mm-hmm. also really weird because like, wait, this is a whole species. So you're telling me that like this liquid can just turn people into this species of? Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of a, it's really weird. Yeah, there's a lot of great concepts in it, and they. They give you a taste of a lot of them. The yeah. scene, the scene when he, he his his one of his arms has turned fully into a alien arm, but not the rest of him yet. And the government catches him, and they 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 can't fire the weapons of mm-hmm. the prawns, so they put one of the weapons in his hand and force him to shoot it. Yeah, at another prawn, like force his hand to do it, oh, and yeah. like like obliterates this other innocent prawn. Yeah, and he's like screaming yeah. and crying the whole it, time while it's happening, and you're it's just like. like Ugh. Yeah, it's like Rough. a very uh, uh, we call it like a civil rights movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, for sure. Animal cruelty, almost um, lab yeah, testing. Are kind you of calling stuff. these aliens animals? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it definitely it definitely is a head scratcher as well as a really entertaining movie. Yeah. Um, so if you even if the you know you you could you could understand the language whatsoever, it's still an entertaining movie. So um, worth a watch. District Nine on netflix right now yeah tyler so uh my streaming pick for this week is the ring streaming on hulu and some big names this week (laughs) (laughs) ringu uh the sleeper hit the ring (laughs) (laughs) so uh the ring it's a pretty uh well-known movie it's about a, a videotape being found by a woman and she watches it and she has seven days to live after watching the videotape i chose this movie because i feel like it gets lumped in a lot with like kind of the bad movies of the early 2000s because this movie came out in 2003 and i feel like that was or sorry 2002 and that was like when really really bad horror movies were coming out and i feel like the ring got lumped in with all of those really bad horror movies and yeah. it's actually a really good movie like the concept mm-hmm. and even as far as going to buy the dvd like the the interactive features they have on the uh, menu is yeah it's really it's really it's really an experience so uh mm-hmm. The Ring, um, starring Naomi Watts, and is that who's stars in that? It's been so long since I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, Naomi Watts. It was, uh, yeah, two thousand two is when it came out. It was really, really early in the two thousands. Yeah, is that is this the one where she she's t- telling the story about how they found the person's body in the closet, and their faces all twisted up or something? Yeah. Is like pulls back. To reveal this like dead body in the closet, or is that the Grudge? No, that's the Grudge you're thinking of. Uh, the Ring is where the it's this girl who gets thrown down a well. Yeah, but and didn't, th- didn't like how it kills people? Like their face gets all twisted. Yeah, up there's and a stuff. scene I remember where she turns the she turns the chair, 
Yeah, she, yeah, uh, it's it, yeah, yeah. Maybe there was a chair turn. It was really disturbing though. The, yeah, the, and the, the face is all like, face is all jacked up. And what I really like fun of it on scary movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I really liked the, about the ring is that the ring is a ring of light that is shown through the well cover. The well, yeah. Like the, I thought that was really well done, mm-hmm. and um, so yeah, it, it's a good horror movie. Uh, also starring Brian Cox. Name sounds familiar. What's he in? He's in uh, the Jason. He's in the uh, uh, the Born Identity. He's the sh- oh yeah the older guy. He's, I was a, gonna, he's, he's the, the police sh- chief. From, yeah, I was gonna say, um, yeah, super troopers, from, uh, super troopers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh Hagen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. yeah, the the ring. Um, you know, not really much to say about it other than if you're a fan of horror movies, this is a really good horror Go movie watch it, to yeah. watch. Yeah. Yeah, all on Amazon. Uh, Amazon and Hulu. Oh, cool. And yeah. Hulu, cool. All right. Well, my stream pick for this week is a documentary. I know last week I did a documentary series, Dark Tourist. Oh yeah. Which started the whole yeah. David Ferrier thing. This one and is the week week before that you did. Um, would you be my neighbor? Oh yeah, true. Oh, I'm seeing a trend here. Um, Doctor documentary. Well, you are a really hip <laughs> doc, dude, doc. so. I'm a really what, dude? You cut I said, out. I said you are really <laughs> hip, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one is called Haunters, the Art of the Scare. And it hmm. is a documentary about people who put on haunted houses in, uh, throughout, I think, mainly in Southern California. Um, is it like the interactive haunted houses where they, like, the, the beat stream you? Haunted yeah, like they, they, like, beat you and shit? Yeah, so that's one particular. Well, there's two. There's there's two haunted houses. One of them's not really a haunted house. More of them's just like a real life kidnapping simulation. Wow. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. I think I know. Which, I think we and Brie watched this together, and and, she's the, and then um, the other one is actually is actually uh, <laughs> like a gore fest, like horror Rob Zombie, uh, uh, haunted house called uh, McCamey Manor. Oh yeah, yeah I've, that's I've, the one. Yeah, McKinney that's, Manor is yeah. like it's like the grotesque yeah, mansion, but yeah. they can they, touch you and shit. And they they assault you. Yeah, they like, they tie you underwater. tie you to chairs. They waterboard you. They put shit in your mouth. They put cockroaches in your mouth. Yeah, it's Damn, uh, who would pay for that? So you don't pay for it. You the way you get into to the haunted house is you pay them in dog food. What? That's yeah. just so weird. Oh my you god. Pay, yeah, pay them in dog food, which they donate to a like a a nonprofit like animal shelter. Um, yeah, because so that's they're kind of they good they, people. That's what they need. They need <laughs> dog food, not not just actual money that would actually you know. Yeah, yeah. Make a so the documentary follows. I feel like this uh, pop out. The documentary <laughs> follows different haunters, um, people who are like higher up in the industry, people who work for like Universal. Um, and put on that big uh, haunted house at Universal Studios. Um, I didn't even know that year. Universal Studios did something like that. Yeah, it's like it's a really popular uh, event. Well, I am a plebe, so you know. Um, and then they follow this one guy who had, who was like a prop maker uh, for movies. Um, he has his own haunted house that he he runs like in the front of his parents' uh, house, um, and he, like, he spends like all almost like six to eight months out of the year working on um wow that's and dedication. He, he was a prop maker for he like made movie uh, props for minority report um some big name movies and um yeah and then they also talk about uh the interview um people who are like the scarers the, the actors in the haunted houses and uh kind of like what they what what the uh the draw is for them like why they do what they do um, and they follow this one woman who like who is like a who's, uh she's like not infamous she's famous within the um haunt community mm-hmm. um like people want to be like her like they they aspire to her to be uh that that uh sought oh, out. yeah she plays like as like different zombie characters or whatever yeah. inside the house scaring you know, patrons. Yeah. Yeah, and it's. Um, I totally forgot about that. Her in this documentary. Yeah, it's kind of uh, on her story. It's kind of sad because she's like getting older, and she gets she got like injured because she was attacked by some like drunk people in a haunted house, um, mm-hmm. 
and so she uh, can't really do as much as she can. So that that's kind of a sad part of it. And um, but a lot of it is about McKimmy Manor, and that dude is just fucking insane. He's an, he's an insane person. Holy yeah. shit! So he's like, I just want this, the footage. I just want the footage. So this woman gets beat for like having like a haunted house, and then. There's this McKinney guy who has this fetish for assaulting much. people at a yeah. quote unquote haunt. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like a 10 hour haunt. You're like going through this for 10 hours. But a, a, what I've heard is that you get $20,000 if you make it through the whole 10 hours. No way. And nobody's yeah. ever done it. Yeah. Twenty thousand dollars till the end. I mean, if no one's ever done it, then like shit. Like, are they killing these people at the like end? One one person had a heart attack whilst in in yeah, and like he he's you'd have to watch it. You really got to watch it. It's to get the it's full really view of how it's a really interesting documentary. All right, mm-hmm. inside of the haunt community, uh, and it's actually like a pretty good movie to watch during Halloween. That's kind of when we watched it. Um, All right. But it, yeah, it's really interesting. I, I I'd recommend it. And you just when you see this stuff from McKamey Manor, it's just like holy shit, this guy. And he like he's <laughs> married. His wife just seems like I don't know. She's she's not like against it or anything, but she's she doesn't seem like the type, you know. But he definitely seems like the type. Little uh, little side note on McKamey Manor. Since there's been multiple like specific documentaries about him and his yeah. house since this one came out. And he's been basically kicked out of the community that he lives in in San Diego. Mm-hmm. And he's living in, like, Kansas or Kentucky or something. Oh, yeah. His, right. Him and his wife are divorced now. He moved to the she Midwest. Left, she left him. And he got country er, country property, and he runs an even more insane haunted house oh, because, ex- experience. Because, yeah, he's a- able to do things out there that the uh, – um, county wouldn't let him do in San Diego. Wow. <laughs> yeah, if you watch wow. also, not on, no, so there's this documentary, but he's also featured on Dark Tourist. Yes, yes, yes. You're yeah, right. That's where I first heard about him, was Dark Tourist. Um, <laughs> he's nuts. Every time we bring up this this doc, Bree gets visibly upset and is like, I hate that guy. Yeah, I, he, hate, I hate the fact that he's out there. Yeah, yeah, he's, I'm so, yeah. And it's like he doesn't make any money doing this. Like no. he's not he's not charging a, a cover charge. His money yeah, he's it, yeah. lost like like half a million dollars, more than that probably. But yeah, I recommend uh, Haunters: The Art of the Scare. All right. On uh, streaming on Netflix. By the way, BG Dubs. Um, <laughs> but uh, are you guys ready to uh, get into this uh, little from beyond action? Oh uh, boy! Yeah. Am I ever? All right, so uh, so you guys hadn't seen it before. Um, what were your initial thoughts at the end of this movie? Go ahead, Tyler. So uh, I thought this was a classic 80s practical effects horror film. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, the thing with H.P. Lovecraft stories is that they're just really hard to capture on film. So it definitely lacked in the cosmic horror sense, but yeah. it, it's it, it was good. I I liked it. You liked it, well, yeah. Pete. Pete, did you like it? Yeah, it was. Um, <clears throat> I was expecting a flat out no. <laughs> I I didn't no. I didn't really. I didn't love it. There was times when I like was laughing out loud. I was like. <laughs> like the scene um gosh which which what one really made me laugh was um when he's like uh he's the the uh the the demon monster doctor guy mm-hmm. he's fully evolving into whatever the hell oh, he yeah. becomes <laughs> and, and and he's got the uh the the research scientist the blonde lady and he's got her and she's like what are you going to do to me he goes I'm gonna kiss you, oh, and then yeah. and then the weird like worm thing like head, head splits open and oh, worm yeah. comes out and just like en- engulfs her whole head and just starts like slurping away. And I was like, ah, what the fuck? <laughs> what is that? I like I had no idea what to expect, and I I know it was like a gross out movie. It was this and that, but it was 
it was like what what like coked up like concoction <laughs> you know who, who, who thought of this I, I know it was H.P. Lovecraft but I think Tyler was onto something when he said it's really hard to to portray an H.P. Lovecraft um, sci-fi movie or book into a movie yeah so I, I will say that there's a lot to be said about that it's a big task to do uh-huh. and for 86 the special effects were pretty good there was a couple times when I was like the main character, he when he gets that weird antenna thing that starts coming out of his forehead, the pineal gland. It's the pineal yeah, gland. No, they call it the pineal or what was it? Pineal. It's pineal. Pineal. Pine, pineal. I mean, yeah, like pineal. I call it pineal, pineal. but like, the, well, like, well, whatever it is, it become he becomes like an angler fish, and he's got it this enlarges. thing that like squicks out of his forehead. But yeah. as he's as he's standing, he's vertical in the scene. The real actor. And he's got this bulging thing under his skin, and it keeps like turtle heading yeah. <laughs> oh, God. out of his forehead. I was like, "How are they? How are they doing that?" Yeah, you know, yeah. if if you're stuck to a table or you're wrapped up in other practical effects, and you're able to put whatever mechanical shit you mm-hmm. want to poke in and out, like the monster was, you know, that was in itself was pretty cool. Yeah, um, how it was his actual face surrounded by all this other cr- bananas junk you know to make this monster but he was he was like standing and walking around and was still doing that and i was like this is really impressive yeah what do you think Um, joseph what did you what did you think about this movie from beyond well i was grossed out definitely but um i can't say i would recommend it but i can't say that i wouldn't (laughs) recommend i'd recommend it to a specific kind of person yeah, that's, that's probably right. Yeah, because like if you're a person who is who loves practical effects, then this movie is definitely for you. Or really, if you're like a fan of like '80s horror m- movies, this is a definitely classic '80s horror movie. The the thing that I found the most um, the most um, negative about the movie was that it it didn't it didn't really make a ton like a ton of sense yeah like there were no rules to this you know just like in the competitive tickling game how do you <laughs> win the game right how, how do you, how do you score in competitive tickling who's the winner who's the loser yeah there was only like uh the only thing i could think of was like don't move they'll see you that was like the t-rex yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. exactly <laughs> the it was, weird it was like worms, that was that weird tapeworms yeah that you can see the strings on <laughs> the eels, yeah, the, the eels, the eels, the like sky flying eels. That, but it was like, it was like in in any good um, sci fi piece and a monster piece and a zombie, mm-hmm. whatever. They 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 set out the rules of this thing that doesn't exist in our world early on in the movie, so that you can go, oh, they can't do this because of that rule. You know, in a in the zombie world, you can't get uh, bitten by a zombie. That's about it, right? And then in in some zombie movies. They'll they'll specify, you know, you don't don't can't get bitten and don't get any of their blood in your body. Yeah, and you're like, oh, that rule ha- uh, was clearly outlined in the beginning, which means that somebody's going to get blood in their mouth later in the movie. <laughs> yeah, you know, or, or in their eye. In the case of one, I can't remember what zombie movie that was, but that was that was kind of weird. It was like the machine turns on, a bunch of shit happens, and then things go bananas. I wish there was some structure to that. So let's uh. Let's go back to the beginning of the movie. Yeah. So we start. We're we're in the house. The machine gets turned on by uh, Crawford Tillinghast, an assistant to great name, Doctor <laughs> uh, Edward Pretorius. Edward is his name, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so he turns it on. He sees the eels, the <laughs> and then the eel just when he latches onto his face, turns the machine <laughs> off. He runs and tells Pretorius, like Pretorius. The machine, the resonator, it's working. There's fucking uh, eels <laughs> coming out of there, man. And then you see Pretorius coming out of his sex dungeon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. With, with no shirt. silk robe on. <laughs> yeah, putting a silk robe on, no shirt on. Um, and then, you know, things kind of from there get worse and worse every time they turn <laughs> the machine on. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's a wild ride. And the whole, the, the when they bring up the the idea or the concept of the pineal gland uh, regulates uh, basically horniness. 
Um, yeah, that's yeah, what that's what sexual they say. Sexual libido. That's what your they say in the movie. Yeah, that's what they say in the movie is the pineal. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's the gland that makes like dreams happen. I'm not. I. I'm not sure about mm-hmm. that, but hmm. like I, that's what I heard about the pineal gland. I thought the casting was a little weird that they took Doctor Pistorius like this weird old hairy guy. And made him the one that they're like, oh, yeah, he's a freak. He's going to be the leader of this, like, weird sex cult kind of machine <laughs> that, like, yeah. when, when they flash forward to him, they're like, surprise, he's not really dead. Oh, but he is. He's only alive in this weird, like, phantom Oh, world. yeah, he got his head twisted off. He got his yeah. head twisted off, yeah, which I thought was a really ingenious death move. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have never seen that before. Of all the death scenes I've seen in movies, that was the first. So this movie came right after the success of The Reanimator. So I think, and I think really this movie was written for Jeffrey Combs because Jeffrey Combs um, in this movie, he's very charismatic. He's always... He's the cop, right? No, no, no. Jeffrey Combs is the. Um, oh, he's the, Crawford. He's Crawford. Crawford. He's a scientist. Yeah. You know, he's. he's oh, Ken Forey's Bubba. Yeah, Ken Forey's Bubba. <laughs> Bubba Brown. Yeah. Um, what was his What was his role again? He was a cop that he was, was a there cop. for what purpose? He was the best of the force. Sure, but why was he there? Um, I think to it was, monitor Crawford. Yeah, it was. Oh, because he was a the supposed basically a mental the, patient. She's allowing to go into the custody of this yeah. scientist. Yeah, exactly. Okay, he was like a, more sense. I yeah. was confused. So uh, Jeffrey Combs, he is, I mean, if you've seen The Reanimator and Bride of the Reanimator, he is the face of those movies because he has such a charismatic uh, role every time. So like with Crawford, you know, it, it, it's so I, I guess what I'm going at is like the side characters and stuff. It felt like it was meant to interact with the character that he was playing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it seemed he was very centric part of that movie. Yeah. Does does he have that same demeanor in the Reanimator? Like this panicked. Um, oh yeah, he's... look all all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, kind of. So, like in the Reanimator, he's more uh, confident in himself it, rather than being the assistant. But at the same time, though, he does have that very, uh, you know, very charismatic facial expression, like just like the like. Oh my God! I don't. I don't know if I would call his facial expressions charismatic in this. <laughs> They're more like panic stricken. <laughs> yeah, but like he 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 looks like he's on the verge of tears every time he like looks at someone. <laughs> he just has. I don't know. Like his face is just really just like it's an unforgettable face for me. Mm-hmm. Like for me, like I like I would always know it is unforgettable. Yeah. Like. At least uh, '80s Jeffrey Combs, like you can always tell, like what kind of movie he's gonna be in. He's always in these like really sci-fi, like eccentric scientist roles. Yeah, he looks like he lost his lips in an accident and then grew back like <laughs> <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> so Pretorius gets his head twisted off by a yes by a creature uh, that's in the off screen. You don't get to see it, right? But then. So he becomes the master there now of that uh, that realm or that yeah, uh, realm. A, yeah it's a, a like pl- a next, plane of it's a dimension. Yeah, it's like well, yeah, it's because almost like a, they say it's like a sixth sense. Um, mm. so he becomes that monster. So I'm just curious about what like was it a person what before? The monster was what, before? What was it before? Pretorius. It was maybe, a, maybe it's like a xenomorph where it takes bits of the things that it kills and creates the next generation or something. Yeah, maybe. that's what I that's what I was kind of thinking too. Is just like it's just a combination of all of the uh, living beings. That's the thing with H.P. Lovecraft stories, though, is like it's so hard to like make it good on film because when you're reading it, like you can imagine it like being like this like super cosmic like horror aspect. But then on film, it's so hard to, like, recreate, like, Mm -hmm. your imagination that you're reading this story. Because from beyond, like, on paper, like, if you're reading it, you're like, this is a really, this is really engaging. Like, holy shit. But putting it out there, like, it's kind of, it's hard. 
I mean, that's why I love Annihilation so much is because, like, they had the technology to, like, do, like, that weird cosmic horror. But, like, for 1986, uh, it was a bit more difficult. <laughs> I, I, I really love the part when he, he gets his, uh, Cropper gets his pineal gland burst through his forehead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he goes, <laughs> he goes, um, f- like, at first he's, like, resistant. He's like, ah, no, ah. And then it bursts out, and then you see the view from his oh yeah land, and vision. it's almost like the predator vision, but like a shitty version of that. Yeah, and he says, "Oh, it's so beautiful,", beautiful. <laughs> it's and it's so like this beautiful. shitty heat signature view of this crappy room <laughs> he's standing in, yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "It's beautiful," One. and yeah. um. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, and I actually so Ken Forey, he's the sheriff who plays uh, Bub- Bubba Brown. Bubba Brown, yeah. Come a Bubba. Which, by the way, by the way, he's wearing a uh, he's wearing a jersey with his name name on the back, number fifty five Brownlee. Wow. <laughs> so he um, he is a horror icon, and I'm glad that. I saw him in this movie. It, it seemed very... Different. What else has he been in? Well, he was in uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. He was in the original Dawn of the Dead in 1978. He was in The Devil's Rejects. Oh, Lords of Salem, too. Oh, yeah, he was in the... He was the guy that like ran yeah, the whorehouse yeah, in yeah, Devil's Rejects, right? he was, he was right? the guy who ran the whorehouse there. He was in True Blood. Like, he was in a bunch of really... Hmm. Really, like... Like, he's just... he's. Just one of those sleeper sleeper side characters. The name sounds familiar, but I couldn't. I could, I mean, his face kind of looks familiar, but I I was very distinct. I, was like, I couldn't. I couldn't. Face. Yeah, he's got this kind of um, interesting eyes. Yeah. So um, he's he's always really good in horror movies like this, and I thought he was one of the funnier characters in this movie because he was just like, "What the <laughs> fuck is going on here? No, we need to leave." Like. Yeah. He was never said. Sed- How can you eat after something like that? And it was funny because he was never so. Uh, as the movie goes on, uh, you kind of like realize that this wave of dimension that hits people, like it caused them to be super horny for mm. one reason or another. And he, it seemed like he was completely immune to it. And I thought that was badass. Like, like he did not succumb to that. Uh, to the dimension, horniness. yeah, the, the horny dimension, like uh, Crawford he win, no, and the November. lead actress did. So, on the topic of uh, casting again, as soon as I saw the female scientist come on screen, and she's like, "I'm an expert in this field," and I was like, <laughs> "She just looks like the classic hot girl in glasses movie trope that's just waiting to get the freak potential unlocked in her." <laughs> and you know, it was like that. Uh, What's what's that movie? Um, she's all that, or never been kissed, or one of those like teen dramas where the guy, the popular kid at school, you know, picks up. I'm just the, a bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that girl. You know, you want me to take her to prom? Oh, she's so ugly, and she's just like has glasses. You know, <laughs> yeah, a hot chick with glasses and her hair is in a bun. Um, it was like that, and I was like, she's gonna turn into some, I don't know, something, and then and then sure enough. Smash cut to her in bondage gear, you know, <laughs> feeling up Crawford. <laughs> and uh, Bubba Brownlee comes in and is like, look at you. Is this is this who you are? And he, like, <laughs> shows her shows the mirror. But and be- she's... Before that, that just, just before that scene where he, like, grabs her and shows her the, her mm-hmm. reflection, he's like, mm-hmm. he's like, you're asking for it. And I was like, what is she asking for? <laughs> the backhand that's what he's asking for oh my god yeah Robert Brownlee's old school he's not afraid to backhand a girl <laughs> so they turn on the machine once they get semi horny and then they all rest on it she's like let's go we gotta do it again and then Bubba Brownlee is like what You're... what do you mean we <laughs> yeah why do, Why was Crawford willing to do any of this He's he's clearly emotionally scarred from yeah the first encounter with the worms and the head twisting and the you know permanent uh, mental scarring pretty much and he's just yeah and he's just like yeah let's turn it on and don't worry i could turn it off at any second See, which he doesn't the second that's time. the yeah. problem with hp lovecraft stories though is because in literature you could say like he was seduced by the feeling of feeling that like wave again like you can't really say that without explaining it like it it's i mean it's really hard hmm. yeah. so 
I mean, that's awesome. that's what I got from it was <laughs> it was just like yeah, I mean, yeah, it was done not, you know, it it wasn't like Academy Award winning acting here, but <laughs> like I have what? an active imagination, so I was just I inferred that he was seduced by the feeling yeah. of feeling that dimension on his mind again, and it was just I don't know. But I then, guess... but she, but he uh, doesn't he deny it first because they go to sleep, and then she wakes up and then goes and turns it on by herself. That's true. Yeah, I mean. That's true. Yeah. Well, he's passed out after the. Well, let's see. How's it go? It that's not. It's, it's bef- that's it before off. the basement monster. Yeah, it's first time turns off. The second time, she turns it on by herself. That's when she gets molested the first time. Yeah. <laughs> when she like when she like, hear her clothes get ripped off, and you're like, oh, I forgot this is a 1986, so <laughs> there has to be boobs in it. <laughs> I was I was like shocked by like. Ah, the main character gets her dress ripped off and her breasts are all exposed, and you're like, "Oh, I forgot this is the year that I was born." And that's every movie was like that. <laughs> I thought it was really funny that they said that schizophrenia was caused by interdimensional beings. Oh yeah, this is what's the schizophrenic see. Yeah, <laughs> tapeworms floating around their heads. They're eels, Tyler. <laughs> In the second, the second time they turn on this machine and all this shit happens, Crawford is standing right next to the switch, right? And I know we just talked about it. Yeah. He's seduced by da 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 whatever. But he just he just leaves. Yeah, I know, and right? And then he runs right to the basement, and uh, Bubba Brownlee is like, where are you going, man? And he's like, I'm going to go flip the switch. He's in his orange. I'm going to turn the circuit breaker. Yes, underwear. orange biki- bikini brief <laughs> underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But he, he's like... His goal is to turn the machine off. Yeah. Why not flip the damn switch? Yeah, why not just turn And the then switch? go down to hit the circuit breaker. But no, they go down to the basement, and there's a giant worm creature in there. Which giant, yeah, puppet s- monster worm. Sucks his hair off his head, apparently. <laughs> his eyebrows, his <laughs> hair, everything. <laughs> Full disclosure, the first time... Um, so Joseph had already seen this, right? He put on the on the wheel. Joseph and Tyler had come over on Friday, and we were like, let's watch From Beyond. Let's watch it all together. I fell asleep 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. <laughs> I had a long day. I fell asleep about 20 minutes in. My notes were like, I had like six notes. And then I, I kept waking up periodically and I'm like, that guy doesn't have hair now. <laughs> and then, then I go back to sleep and I'm like, why is she in bondage gear? <laughs> go back to sleep. <laughs> it's Once I rewatch it again, I'm like, man, it's, it's about what I expected. Yeah, the plot moves very fast in this movie. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. Can I can I ask a question? Yes. Who packs a full length, full sleeved silk gown on a research trip? <laughs> <laughs> the late the, the the female scientist. I can't remember her name now. Uh, but she's like it's uh, Catherine. Catherine. So she she they go to sleep after the first night, right? They're like, let's get some sleep. And she goes to sleep, and it cuts to her tossing and turning in her bed. And she's wearing a full length, <laughs> full sleeved white silk gown, yeah, nightgown. Mm. And then she goes up and does her thing, whatever. Gets attacked, gets molested, all this stuff happens. Yeah. And then smash cut to them in the um, kitchen. And she, over top of that, she's wearing a suede velvet bathrobe on top of it. <laughs> she packed both of those things for this research trip. <laughs> you know, she's got to I'm like, comfy. I don't know. I don't know. That gotta, that was the most unbelievable thing about this movie. Got to be comfy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I had a nightgown like that, like, you know, I'd be packing that if I was on vacation. It'd be in the trunk of my car, just in case. You never know. You never know <laughs> when you need a silky gown. nightgown. You know, you you never know. You never know. And I don't, and, I, and on, a, on a side side note, I don't know anybody who wears sleepwear specific clothing to bed anymore. Like everybody just wears, that I know, just wears like basketball shorts or boxers or whatever to bed you know mm-hmm. gone are the times of actual pajamas with like a hat <laughs> and a little puff ball on the side <laughs> <laughs> but button up pajamas that match the tops and bottoms with your monogram on the cuff actually after yeah. seeing yeah. the lighthouse i've been looking into getting like a onesie long johns because <laughs> i have a pair of long johns that i wear to bed but like after seeing robert pattinson in a long john onesie i'm like dude i need one fuck yeah dude <laughs> so that's what i want we got the basement monster uh from star wars 
Um, and we, we <laughs> finally, finally get to see it, what it actually looks like. Um, yeah. It leeches off his hair, his eyebrows. Um, and then yeah, so right weird. after that, he's uh, passed out. By the way, Crawford is is sleeping in the sex dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, and then, That's and then That's his room. And then Catherine goes upstairs, and Bubba's like, all right, pack up. We got to get out of here. And then get and get dressed and then she's like uh, <laughs> get dressed she's she's uh she's like oh and she does she's like caressing the the cuffs and the all the equipment and then she the leather daddy she, gear she runs into the uh she's like oh I ran into the closet full of leathers and mm-hmm. she's like oh my gosh this is so soft and smooth and she's discovering her kinks with leather she's a uh, and it's there's se- lipstick here for me too. Sexual awakening for her. Yeah, see, mm-hmm. on film it just seems so like not genuine. But like if you read this, like if you read that she was being forced by this like force of another dimension, like it would be a lot more impactful. But like it just shows her getting into leather dominatrix attire yeah. <laughs> and it just kind of seems like it's a cop out essentially to sell yeah. a movie but it's the thing about hp lovecraft is if you're a fan of like cosmic like out of your mind horror like it's really hard to like say like oh i'm being driven by this force to do it for context everyone the the acting is not good in this movie so <laughs> it's really not done well i'll say yeah it's really not done well so yeah. i'm just trying to defend the plot as it was written not as it was acted yeah so then right after that we get the whole confrontation like this isn't who you are look at you <laughs> yeah and then uh, they go back up. The machine turns its oh, turns itself the wires, on. Yeah, the wires reconnect somehow. Yeah. It's zoop. Okay, <laughs> I guess that's how it works now. Um, and then uh, they go up there, and then they get attacked by bugs of some kind. And then it was Bubba's the beetles lo- from the mummy. Yeah, like, like a yeah, like a locust. Yeah, like tiny little like a lo- tiny little locusts, like <laughs> yeah. gnats. They're attacked by yeah. gnats. And then Bubba's way of helping them was shining a light somewhere else. <laughs> and then he, and then they, it lands on him. and then he throws the light and then it, the light is on his face and he's like, oh no. And then, <laughs> <laughs> he's not coming. And then he like, he, he, he can't move. He, <laughs> he gets, uh, well after yeah, he gets, he can't through, move for some reason. Something, something is holding him down. You know, he's, he's laying there with like the skin off his arm and legs being totally gone and he's and then his, his that that little set piece when it's just like his the like actor's head and this weird yeah. like bloody skeleton flesh body yeah. below him look remind me of like a sketch comedy uh bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was funny and he, but it was a good way to get him to um, be able to say his last words, which I don't even remember <laughs> me either I don't remember Probably like fuck you white people I know <laughs> yeah God damn honkies. <laughs> <laughs> you white people. Um, so then they, that, at that point, they get out of the house because the cops come, right? Or they go to the police or they go to the hospital or something. Yeah, they get the kind of dissolve away. Some It gets turned off somehow. Oh, oh, I forgot. She sprays it with a fire extinguisher. Oh, yeah, which that's is right. Somehow it's weak. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it gets, it's, the phone. It's cold now. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then kind of it dissolves out, and then it yeah. um, fades from black into now she's the crazy person in the hospital being interrogated by the authorities. Oh yeah, yeah. and Crawford is the victim, and the nurse mm-hmm. that she treated poorly in the beginning of the movie is now her nurse, and she's like, "I'm about to fuck you up." Yeah, yeah. shock your brain, shock bitch. therapy yeah, she, right now. She's like, set her up for electro shock therapy, and then the nurse is like, "But your honor, I mean, doctor, <laughs> hey, but your <laughs> hospital policy states." <laughs> And she backhands her. Not really. You hear what I said, bitch? Do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then she's about to get a requiem for a dreamed. And then uh, <laughs> you mean ass to ass? Um, <laughs> no. Ellen Burstyn uh, uh, medicine. Ellen Burstyn requiem for dreamed. Um, <laughs> yeah, not Jennifer Connelly. Um, but then she gets uh, 
they get distracted somehow. The uh, the, the uh, Crawford because Cro- yeah Crawford is Crawford is eating someone's brain, sucking it through out through their eyeball. Yeah, he and he, he has finds like a little dick um, coming out of his forehead too. He finds a uh, they're like gonna do the operation on his head or something, and then he gets out, and then he finds a hazardous waste bucket. And then he starts, yeah. he starts eating the brains. It's kind of like that X-Files episode where that one guy who's working in the fast food restaurant would, like, eat those brains out of the uh, victims in the drive-thru. Anyways. I <laughs> I, I, uh, I did like the fact that the guy that was about to administer her electroshock therapy seemed genuinely disappointed. I know. He's he like, wasn't able to do it. <laughs> yeah. But what about her? Come on, man. <laughs> I was so close. I got all shocked. Why do you think I I went to medical school for? (laughs) And then he uh, and Crawford, you know, he's on his his brain kick. (laughs) The 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 EMTs arrive with a homeless man um, in the back of the van. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. The one EMT in the van, he's like, "Give me a candy bar. I'm hungry." (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she was she was a breath of fresh air. (laughs) Yeah. I do, I do. Like, I wrote a note down that um, when, when she's like, gosh, she has to be dumb as a bag of rocks. But she's, she's like in there, and something happens to her partner Harley, mm-hmm. and the something is Crawford sucking his brain out through his eyeball. <laughs> oh yeah, hole. yeah. And and she's like, she comes around the corner and looks down at what would be her partner's. Condition. The homeless man is there too, and the harmless man is there too. But you're, she's clearly looking like at down at the ground where Harley would be, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Harley, are you all right?" Like clearly staring directly at him, <laughs> and then and then it pans, swish pans over to him with his eyeball hanging out of his goddamn skull, <laughs> and, she, Harley? and she's like, "Are you? You're a paramedic. <laughs> He's not all right. This eyeball's hanging out by the." Tentacle I'm sorry. That thing this is. happens all the time. It, it's did anyone, no big deal. <laughs> did anyone yeah. get so before that happens? The they say the homeless man has gone into DTs. Does anyone know what that means? Oh, wow. I've heard it before. In I feel like I caught on to that idea. while I was no. watching mm-hmm. it, but now I'm drawing a blank on it. This, they say mm-hmm. that he's gone into DTs because clearly he's like he's got like throw up on him. He's like drunk and I don't know what he's he drunk is. and thrown up. DT. Yeah. Yeah, DT. Is he like, is that like almost like withdrawals? Maybe he's a junkie. I don't know. If any of our fans know what DTs oh, wow. mean, Me- please let us I'm know. On, I Googled it real quick. Medical terms, DT. And for all you beer snobs out there, medical definition is delirium tremens. Oh, shit. Delirium tremens, a central nervous symptom of alcohol That's withdrawals awesome. that is seen in Whoa. chronic alcoholism. Symptoms include uncontrolled trembling, hallucinations, severe anxiety, uh, sweating, and a sudden sudden feelings of terror. Holy shit. Oh, damn. Wow. That's, that's exactly what he would have right there. Yeah. Uh, and that's one of my favorite beers. <laughs> William Tremens, yeah, one of the best beers in the world. You know, it's funny that the, the logo for Delirium Tremens is the uh, pink elephant, yeah. which is also oh, wow. a short, shorthand for like 1920s drunkards yeah. seeing yeah. pink yeah, elephants. Exactly. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, well, fun fact of the day. Yeah, the stuff we unlock from watching From Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> so after that whole thing, the psychiatrist steals a van, goes back to the house, um, and plants a bomb that she found or made. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wherever some you, C4. You, know, you get you, yeah, you get C4 at the local uh, drugstore. Yeah. And, um, yeah, she tries to plant the bomb, or she does plant the bomb, and then she goes... What she do? She goes down to the basement, or does the machine turn back on? Um, she no, she has the machine. The machine turns back on, and uh, Crawford shows up out of nowhere. The mach- the 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 alien thing uh, goes is, uh, down downstairs. It turns into like a, you know like a pterodactyl looking thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Goes downstairs and then twists his head off, his yeah. bald head. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's the end of Crawford. Well, that sucks, you know. He, he died. And then back upstairs in the attic with the machine and Catherine. And a shit's about to go down. She's mm-hmm. about to get eaten her face off by uh, Pretorius. Pretorius. Yep. And then out of nowhere, a hand rips through his mouth. Oh, yeah. And out comes Crawford. <laughs> and I'm like... 
what at this point in the movie i was just going along with whatever was happening because it really it really went off the rails after the hospital i i wrote down they really jumped the shark when crawford comes out of the monster's (laughs) mouth out of fucking nowhere yeah made me laugh out loud what the fuck is going on in this damn movie? Skeleton Crawford worm is attacking oh, another yeah. worm monster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's even weirder is that Crawford has all his hair back. Oh like yeah, he has, that's yeah. Right. Like like he was reborn. It's almost like when he got swallowed up by that um, Tim Burton puppet worm thing in the basement. He it's almost like he became his like a different person, or he got his soul sucked out of him. So maybe maybe it wasn't that he sucked the hair off of him. Maybe that was a new Crawford. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. Which does, still doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> but Crawford, Crawford comes back in Ace Ventura fashion. Um, <laughs> Out of the butt of the rhino. With hair. Um, mm-hmm. And then he sort of, you know, he, he's like, uh, he's the savior. It comes at the right time to save uh, Catherine. And then the mm-hmm. bomb is still ticking. And then she uh, sort of, um, he, well, Pretorius first, there's like this shot of Pretorius when like him and uh crawford are fighting internally in this blob of goo yeah. and goop and uh flesh where it's like convulsing on the ground like someone's underneath it just like violently <laughs> shaking it <laughs> <laughs> and then um so she that that allows her to get away and then she realizes oh shit there's only like five seconds left on this thing so she hereditaries herself out the window <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Breaks both her kneecaps. <laughs> yeah, I thought when she landed, I thought she lost her leg. That's how like because I couldn't see. You can't see it. Yeah, yeah it was brutal. It's, it was no, brutal. You don't, you don't see it till she's on the ground and like the neighbors all of a sudden conveniently are now yeah. paying attention the, uh, to the madness the na- that's happening next door. The uh, the neighbors come by as the house is blown up, and you see bones sticking out of her knees, and she's like crying, laughing hysterically. Because mm-hmm. she, it ends with her laughing. That's like the last shot of the movie. Yeah. She's like crying, and then she turns into laughing, and she's like, "Well, okay, she's uh, now, uh, now she's, she's going to be seeing the psychiatrist." I, my final note that I wrote down was that she's got a great scream laugh, and I'm so confused. And why did someone make this movie? <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you made the Reanimator, like you'd be hot, you'd be drunk off of power. <laughs> I I didn't hate it. It was really. It was just bananas, and the plot didn't make a whole lot of sense. But it was almost like a showcase for practical effects. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly to, to me. Yeah, and and at the end of the day, too, it seemed like if you put yourself in the in the shoes of the actors mm-hmm. or the set the set team, yeah. Um, I bet it was a really fun movie to make. I bet people oh, were probably like, definitely. "This is nuts." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I, like being on Double Dare. <laughs> A double down. No, a double dare. The old Nickelodeon show oh. <laughs> where you got to climb inside a nose and oh, pick the sure. giant booger out oh, to yeah, win a prize. Yeah. <laughs> I think you mean Before double you down. Slimed. But yeah, also being in double down. <laughs> double down would be severely depressive to be on set for that. Movie. <laughs> You're just out there alone with Neil Breen. Eating it, tuna. You, only, you know he like only tuna. had one one crew member. Yeah, Did, Neil, we've have we've been <laughs> shooting the same scene for nine hours. <laughs> We're running out of daylight. This is my life. <laughs> so, Pete, I know you just kind of gave your final thoughts on the movie um <laughs> tyler what are your uh, any uh, final thoughts on uh, from beyond um so uh i am a sucker for campy horror 80s films uh i loved it very much it's a very good movie to watch uh if you're almost done. like hey uh so i'm into horror movies you want to watch this movie you know it's it's i don't know it, it's just campy and I like campy, so um, yeah. Uh, I think it was really well done. The practical effects were really great, and I love the cinematographer for this movie. I can't remember what his name was. Uh, it was like a Swedish guy. I looked him up after this movie, but he did a bunch of other movies that I like too, that were like he, horror movies. Mac Alberg. Yes, Mac Alberg. He uh, also did uh, reanimator movies and Beverly Hills Cop three. They, yeah, Ghost Town, Evil Bong. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. I see. I saw Evil. Yeah, Bong. he good, yeah, Evil Bong. Good was, yeah, he did Evil Bong. And he just 
uh, there's a certain like feel to the shots. They're just like really, uh, I uh, creep show like, you know, very. In- mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's just a feeling. So yeah. Uh, anyways, not to ramble on anymore about my love for horror movies. Uh, I would give this movie a two point seven out of five. <laughs> Wow. Just give it three stars. <laughs> I can't. It's not. It's, give, oh. Throw him a throw him a bone. <laughs> All right. All right. You know what? I will throw him a bone. Three out of five for me. Okay. All right. I'll I'll put an official rating on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with three stars also. <laughs> Again, okay. I know I know I sound very critical of this movie, but um, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, fun stuff in it. Yeah. <laughs> and. The plot's not there. Mm-hmm. The acting is good in some scenes and not so much in others. But at the end of the day, I think they accomplished what they set out to do, make a crazy, gross-out movie. And um, people generally like it. It's on Rotten Tomatoes. It's got a 70% audience, 75% on the tomato oh, meter. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a lot higher than I was really expecting. Um, but um, I, I'm definitely... I don't plan on rewatching this one. Not for a while. But like I mean, like you <laughs> yeah. know, if it's on, you're not gonna protest. But I will. I, I will. Um, I will have the knowledge that it's in my memory now. Mm-hmm. There's some. There's some pretty funny one-liners too in it. <laughs> when uh, the first time you see Pistorius as a ghost demon thing, Pistorius and Pistorius, Pistorius, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> and uh, and he says, "Touch me." If it pleases, <laughs> and, then, and then Crawford comes over and touches his shoulder, and his like fingers oh, yeah. sink into his like, clay shoulder, and you're like, Ugh. yeah, ew, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Disturbing. So there's a memory, definitely be, definitely be memorable, memorable imagery. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I watched it, so you know I'm not angry at Tyler, not like George of the Jungle. <laughs> just, just kidding, Tyler. <laughs> um, no, but it was it was fun. Yeah. So I don't. Like I said earlier, I can't say that I would recommend this movie to just anyone. It would have to be a specific kind of person with a specific kind of taste in movies. For sure. Practical effects galore. Acting is subpar. Story is kind of all over the place. There's some really interesting concepts in it that kind of don't get flushed out or they don't pan out really at all. Um, kind of surface level almost. Mm-hmm probably better as a short story but yeah i think um if it wasn't if this movie didn't have the practical effects it did it would probably be like a two for me um but yeah i think i i uh, am in the same boat as well the three boat give it a three out of five yeah um three for three three for three yeah three threes for from beyond here on middle class film class podcast you hit it. You heard it first. <laughs> Three star movie. <laughs> <laughs> Three out of. You take that to the bank. I think uh, that concludes our discussion on Stuart Gordon's From Beyond. Uh, All right. And I think we are now ready to move on to the Wheel of Destiny. The Wheel of Destiny. Tyler, say it. Wheel of Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler was mid inhale on his vape pen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me, uh, I'm gonna erase from beyond. And Joseph, do you have a pick for a replacement? Oh uh, yes, I do. I uh, I kind of been going back and forth on this one, but I think I think it's time for you guys to experience Dunkirk. Oh yes, that's great. That's a great. It's pick. a shame that you can't see it in theaters. Um, because it really is a theatrical experience. Um, I think Pete, you might be able to get a little close. I was just gonna say we're gonna we're gonna crank the volume to the max, put the dogs outside so they don't get scared. <laughs> and we're gonna yeah we're gonna we're gonna go full yeah. movie experience. Lights off, popcorn, everything. Yeah, when we watch it this week. Yeah, it's really and it's really yeah, not it's even that long a movie. It's really it's only an hour and a half. World War Two movie. But the I think it's 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 the story's kind of been done before about the Dunkirk um in a atonement, I think. But there was a little bit more to that movie than just the this is literally like like a like a documentary it's not style, but documentary war movie. 
because um, it's just it's just about the battle. The battle. And uh, um, there's like I, three different perspectives from it. I just realized it, it hasn't landed on this movie yet, so <laughs> I was just thinking in my head. I was thinking, oh, I can't wait to watch this in like two days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll just skip ahead, you know, <laughs> save myself some work for whatever week it does land on. Yeah. Um, so what's on the wheel? Then, actually, I can't. What? Yeah, let's do a recap of the wheel. You know what, Tyler? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> 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 All right, your picks, Tyler, are the Blair Witch Project, the OG Blair Witch Project. Yes. Mister America and Escape from New York, which is your wild card Dude, pick. I love those movies. Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph now has Dunkirk and The Machinist, and his wild card pick is Bad Lieutenant Port of Call in New Orleans. Um, when one of those wild cards get landed on, you guys both have three movies on the wheel. I have two currently. When one of the wild cards gets picked, I will go to the three and we'll rotate from there. Okay. Um, and mine are Bridge on, a, on the River Kwai, and They Look Like People. <clears throat> cool. This is, this is my favorite. My favorite part of the show is replacing the movie on the wheel with another movie. So, is it? Yeah, it's so exciting. Yeah, it really is. Because I'm like, I'm like, I'm anticipating. I'm like, what's he gonna, what's he gonna put on there? What are we gonna watch? All right, ready? Spin the wheel of destiny. The wheel of destiny. Woo! Bad lieutenant, poor call. No oh, sh- back to back. Oh. Back to back for Joseph. Wow. Yeah. Well, wild card from, yeah, wild card. Oh shoot! I sweet. I get now it. you get a wild card week. now. <laughs> yeah, uh, and this is what um, um, Werner Herzog. Werner right? Herzog directed this movie, starring Nicolas Cage and Val Kilmer. <laughs> from Willow. <laughs> yes, from Willow. From such movies as Willow. <laughs> Hey guys, remember me? I was Batman. And if you type in if you <laughs> type in Bla- bad lieutenant, Blad lieutenant, uh, don't. It's not the Harvey Keitel version. It is uh, bad lieutenant, port of call, in New Orleans. Don't forget the subtitle. Sweet. Uh, <laughs> bad lieutenant starring Harvey Keitel has a poster of Harvey Keitel standing naked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With his looking up and his eyes closed. Um, yeah, but Bad Lieutenant, um, Port of Call New Orleans is a kind of... Unauthorized sequel? Uh, it's not a sequel, per se, and it's not technically a remake, I guess. Werner Herzog des- denies that he has seen it. <laughs> or The original. Yeah, or he had heard about it when it was being made, when he was making it. So this was made in 2009. Um Bad Lieutenant plays a lieutenant um, in uh, post-Katrina New Orleans. Um, He's investigating Hmm. a killing of five Senegalese immigrants. Hmm. Um, And his partner is Val Kilmer. Also stars uh, Eva Mendez and Exhibit. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Hey, dog. I heard you like bad lieutenant movies, so we made a bad lieutenant movie after a bad lieutenant movie. <laughs> also starring Faruja Balk and Jennifer oh, Coolidge. Um, Shea Wiggum is also in this. Michael Shannon as well. Um, and Brad Dorif from Child's Play, as we all know. Wow, this has got a lot. This has got a lot of people in it. Yeah, also known from as Grima Wormtongue from Lord of the Rings. Oh yes. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I've only seen this movie once. Uh, it was also a movie plopped on my desk at work that I should watch. <laughs> I watched this probably like a year and a half ago, maybe. Um, and it is a Nicolas Cage movie for sure. <laughs> um, well, I'm looking it up on Just Watch right now for the audience who wants to follow along next week. Mm, a lot of free subs um in like ad versions sony crackle 2b tv voodoo free hoopla roku channel all have it on here hoopla? which is weird because yeah hoopla um hoopla i believe is the one where you uh you just put in your library card number oh canopy is one too free. i think maybe a canopy is canopy one is the library of. one i think as well yeah but it's for rent it's for rent on youtube and google play for four dollars um, i can see if i could borrow maybe. the dvd again yeah, it's uh, I'm looking. I mean, 
Nicholas Cage. You can't have enough Nicholas Cage in your collection. I'll probably I might just buy this one. <laughs> you gonna buy it? Is or it rent? is it worth is it worth buying? I think so. I think a two dollar uh, bin. Two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say I'd pay more than five dollars for it. Well, it's eight dollars to buy on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazon Prime. We'll see. Them. They have some pretty good deals sometimes for uh, DVDs shipped next day. Um. <laughs> So, all right, so for all our listeners out there, if you are a middle-class, film-class faithful and you've been with us since the beginning or you're a new listener just this week, mm-hmm. uh, please follow us on Facebook, middle, uh, facebook.com slash mcfcpodcast, or send us an email at mcfcpodcast at gmail.com. Um, there's a really high likelihood if you send us an email, we are going to read it on air. So um, send, us, send us something today if you have listener art theme music for the intro theme music for the wheel of destiny um we are desperate so (laughs) (laughs) now it would it it is really nice when we see interactions on our facebook page and whatnot so if you send us some uh feedback what you like what you don't like um you know we take it to heart so um thank you all for listening all right well that's the end of the show fellas (laughs) <laughs> Episode 11. It was nice, uh, nice talking. We will. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice interacting with we you. We are humans. Humans. We will. Uh, <laughs> we will see you all next week for Werner Herzog's Bad Lieutenant Protocol, New Orleans. See you later. Awesome. Can't wait. Bye, everybody. Bye.